What's going on everybody? My name's Chris. Welcome to Bourbon Sane. We're back today and we're reviewing a very, very special bottle. A bottle I've been looking forward to reviewing since I heard we were going to be starting this whole process. We're reviewing Beagle Rare. That's right, Beagle Rare, not Eagle Rare. Beagle Rare Kentucky Howl. This is a really, really special bottle. On Instagram, ADHD Fishing, one of my favorite people, favorite accounts to follow, he had this idea. He thought, hey, let's do this infinity bottle it, that gets passed around to a whole bunch of different people, a whole bunch of different channels. So it includes whiskey review channels, uh, podcasts, uh, just in Instagram, popular Instagram accounts. And also Dixon Deadman from Kentucky Owl is also involved in this chain. He's going to be getting the final bottle and kind of fixing all the mistakes we make <laughs> making this infinity bottle. So this was an awesome idea and a great way to bring the whiskey community together. Um, I'm really glad he decided to do this and I, I couldn't be more happy to be a part of this. So let's talk about the rules of this bottle and what exactly this bottle is. So starting out with the Baxter on Beagle Rare Kentucky Howl. This Baxter was completely made up by ADHD Fishing. He did an awesome job. The detail that was put in this was, was just fantastic. As the story goes, Edward H. Trailer was a stagecoach driver in the early 1900s. He lived in a tiny crooked shack with his hunting dog, Muggsy Beegs. The walls of his rickety home were adorned with illustrations of gadgets he someday planned to invent. His entrepreneurial dreams were dashed, however, when oil was discovered on his property and he was offered a large fortune to take his beagle and his drawings and move on down the road. Local historians were quoted as saying, that boy turned cheek, bought a fancy bourbon distillery, shartered down, and just started drinking. Hence the name Old Charter, and that is where this, this product comes from, Old Charter Distillery. So, The Beagle, as discovered later, had a knack for finding the best barrels on the property. When Old Charter finished a barrel, Muggsy Bees would sniff out the next honey barrel and let out a victory howl that could be heard throughout Kentucky. It's up to you, the internet, and ultimately Dixon Deadman to blend the bottle in honor of Old Charter, who lived, who lived our dream, and Muggsy Beegs, the rarest dang beetle who ever did beetle, beagled. <laughs> the rules for this little uh, infinity bottle were simple. Pour as much as you'd like out of the bottle, just make sure you replace it with as much whiskey or more than what you poured in. It has to be either bourbon, rye, wheats, or corn only, so no scotch whiskeys in this at all. Sticking mostly to um, to the bourbon-ish background mash bill on this. So, incredible backstory. Um, he even went into a description about the, the tasting notes and what the experts in the industry say about this bottle. In a completely fictitious blind tasting competition, celebrity guest judge Fred Minnick was underwhelmed with Beagle Rare's Kentucky Howl Bourbon. The remaining five judges on the panel, all ironically named Benjamin Franklin, <laughs> were able to plead their case, however, and convince Minnick to award Beagle Rare a double gold. As he departed, Minnick was quoted saying of Beagle Rare, it's no McKenna, but that dog will hunt. I mean, the creativity from ADHD Fishing is just incredible on this bottle. And I'm going to show you guys some pictures of this actual label. The detail on this label is just ridiculous. First of all, it looks like a professional label, the way he did this. Beagle Rare Kentucky Hall 2019 Collabo Bourbon. Bottled in fraud. <laughs> There's even a little, a little, uh, like, spirits competition, you know, sticker on the top. It says, totally legit neighborhood spirits competition, double gold. <laughs> Release the hounds. Finished in reclaimed bourbon bottles. There's a, a little <laughs> a little description on the side of the bottle here as well. Beagle Rare's Special Kentucky Howl Collabo Bourbon is a blend of straight bourbons and rye whiskeys, aged for a minimum of one dog year. Handcrafted by the internet's finest group of whiskey know-it-alls, Beagle Rare is the integral infinity bottle of the internet. Says right underneath that, 2019 Old Charter Distillery. <laughs> Distilled by legends, blended by a bus driver, finished by the internet. So good. I mean, so good. The creativity, and he's always doing stuff like this, coming up with backstories like this. And I want this to be a yearly thing, and I hope it is. Um, let's get into pouring this and see what uh, what's in this. Now, the Bourbon Junkies just put out their review of this bottle, and they just put the video out. I watched the video, but I um, they said when they were about to announce what's in this blend... I stopped the video there. So I don't know what's in this blend and I don't know um, what they added to the blend either. So I do know they um, they took out two ounces and added two ounces and it was a single whiskey. So I'm gonna do the same thing and stay consistent. 
but I'm, I'd like to see if I could pick out any bottles at all that are in this. It's so tough when it's a blend. It could be who knows how many whiskeys. So color is pretty dark though. Starting out with color on this, nice and dark. Um, not, eh, it's sticking to the glass a pretty good amount actually too. So let's go into the nose on this. Hmm. Good amount of oak coming through, actually. I'm getting a Buffalo Trace vibe from this, so I'm thinking there's probably some Buffalo Trace in this. Um, something Buffalo Trace, it's gotta be. Proof isn't, doesn't seem overly high. I mean, there's a little bit of burn. Maybe just on initial nose, like about the one, 105 to 110. A little bit of nuttiness in this too, I would say maybe. Classic bourbon. I mean, you know, the brown sugar, the burnt caramels. The oak is present, but I'd say it's more on the back end. It's not overwhelming at all. Um, this is now to me leaned more of a, a sweet nose. Cherry in here for sure. Kind of the Buffalo Trace cherry I described, you know, like a cherry cola almost. Smells nice. Let's give it a sip here. Cheers guys to Beagle Rare. Mm. Ooh. Okay. So I got a lot more nuttiness on the palate. Um, and it actually tended to be kind of more of the Heaven Hill nuttiness I would get versus a Jim Beam nuttiness, but it's there. Um, nut, pretty nice mouth coating. It drank a little hotter than 105. Um, if I was guessing maybe 110, 115. I mean, it's a blend of bottles, so we might not know the actual proof anyway, but we can estimate based on what's put in it when we look at it. So, hmm. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's actually a pretty good bottle already. Um, I would probably pay a decent amount of money for this. I, I, this isn't a bad bottle at all. Um, it drinks smoother. I'm, I'd like a little bit more sweetness on the back end, actually. Um, a lot of times, you know, the front's super, super sweet. It's not really overly sweet in the front for me either. Not too much drying oak in the back, which for me personally is great. I like oak, but not to the point where it's drying. Um, it doesn't taste like it's it's super old. I mean, it doesn't taste young by any means, but it's probably about that sweet spot for bourbon on average, I'd say, like the, the six to nine year age, if I was guessing. Yeah, um, it kind of seems to just kind of fall flat on the finish. Um, I'm not getting as much of the mouth coating on the, the like the third sip there as I was with the first. This is my first pour of the day, so I'd like a little bit more sweetness up front, and then the back of the palate. I'd like to get um, more of a, I guess, more a little bit longer of a finish, a little bit better mouth coating if I can. So, yeah, um, on that sip, I will say a little bit more of the kind of the Jim Beam nuttiness was on the front of the palate. Um, but it's not, it didn't linger at almost like a lower proof Jim Beam. If you, if you can understand kind of what that is, like maybe a Jim Beam repeal batch, it gives you a little bit, but not, not overwhelming with that nuttiness that Jim Beam has. So I'm going to, um, take a little bit here with those notes. I'm going to try to pick out a whiskey. I want to add to this and, um, I'm going to also look and see what, uh, what's in this. And I'll talk to you guys about that and see what the bourbon junkies added. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we're back. Um, I took about 20 to 25 minutes, honestly, there looking around the bar and seeing what would fit best with this based on what I wanted to add. So I wanted to add a little bit more oak, a um, little bit more sweetness on the front, a little, little more oak on back, and I wanted a better mouthfeel. Um, those were kind of the big three things, you know, a little bit longer finish, better mouthfeel, and a little bit more sweetness up front. First, let's talk about um, what's in this blend before I go into what I decided to add. So. In this blend, um, pull up the email here, we've got ooh, 1973 Jim Beam. Wow. Okay. Um, there aren't ratios listed on this, so I don't know the ratio that was used, but 1973 Jim Beam, 
So I said Jim Beam, but I've never tried a Jim Beam that old, so I have no idea if that's <laughs> if I should be getting more or less nuttiness with that product. But Stag Junior, um, Old Granddad 114, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, New Rift Single Barrel, wow, and Old Forester Rye, wow. I did not get any of the Old Forester Rye in here. That's a pretty distinct flavor to me. Um, so actually, we've got quite a bit, quite a few of the higher rye mash bills. Um, We've got the Old Forster Rye, New Rift Single Barrel uses a 35% rye usually, mash bill. And then um, the, the um, Old Granddad 114 is also a high rye mash bill. So very interesting. Um, I, I said maybe some Heaven Hill Nightiness. So we've got the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof in here. And I mentioned it's got kind of a Jim or a uh, Buffalo Trace nose. So there is Stag Jr. in here. Um, that's good. That's good for me. I, I'm happy about that. Again, there's, I don't know ratio. So who knows? Maybe he put the tiniest amount and I'm just full of shit. So it's possible. Um, let's see what, uh, Dan and Sean added. They added, uh, E.H. Taylor Batch Proof. Okay. Very nice. So that's another Buffalo Trace product. So, uh, maybe that was starting to come through more and that's why I was getting that. I know, um, they said they took like roughly two ounces out and put two ounces back in. So two ounces were added of the, uh, E.H. Taylor Batch Proof. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> incredible, uh, a really good blend, honestly, a really good blend. And I hope um, what I'm going to do to it's going to improve it. But what I decided on, and this was, this was tough, um, a lot of good whiskeys. I actually decided on a MGP product. Now this is Mayor Pingree. This is from Valentine Distilling. This is their seven year black label. Now, interesting thing about this bottle is it's age dated seven years, but they actually have majority 12 and 13 year old whiskey in this. And the youngest barrels they use for blending was seven years. So they had to put the seven year age statement on this. So in this bottle, I always get a great mouthfeel. Now this bottle specifically is 59%. So it's very high proof. It is non-chill filtered. So the reason I say I want to choose this bottle is it always leaves a very nice mouthfeel. Um, every time I've had this and I've, I've drank down a little bit here. Now you can see. So, um, Every time I've had this, it's, it had a very nice mouthfeel, very nice long finish. Um, I actually, it does help improve a little bit of oak on the back end and the sweetness up front, which a lot of MGP products, especially near cast strength MGP products, I get a lot of that really nice sweetness up front. So I figured this was kind of the all around perfect bottle to add. And I wanted to stay consistent with what Dan and Sean did with just adding one bottle. I didn't want to pick multiple bottles and, you know, one's, one's easiest anyway. So I thought this was kind of the perfect balance of, everything I wanted to add to this whiskey. And we'll see um, what the next person in line thinks. So after me, this bottle is going over to Bill, the whiskey dick. So I'm gonna be sending this to him and I'm curious to see what his thoughts are gonna be on this. I'm gonna go ahead and add this in. This is my two ounce uh, sample right here. Um, so I'm curious what he thinks of this now. I'm wondering if he's gonna get more sweetness up front more oak on the back, you know, uh, I'm really curious to see, hopefully the mouthfeel is going to be even better. It's tough to know if you don't try the product before, you know, that's the thing. So, but I'm, um, I'm loving this chain, excited about it. So many awesome people are involved in this. Um, I'll go ahead and put a list of up everyone who's involved in this chain. And obviously guys, please follow this series. As I mentioned, after me, it's going over to Bill at the Whiskey Dick from in his video he'll go ahead and tell you who it's going to next but we've got a whole chain on youtube instagram podcast so i mean facebook everywhere so please do follow along with this it's um it's gonna be a lot of fun and this was an awesome experiment just for myself trying a completely blind bottle i have no idea what could be in this and the backstory on this just this is so much fun i love doing this i hope we can do this every year one thing i forgot to mention is once this bottle is done uh, ADHD Fishing had the idea of, hey, let's raffle this bottle off or do some kind of auction on it and let's give that money that we make off that to charity. I think that's incredible. Um, the guy is just full of awesome ideas and honestly, like he kind of encompasses everything that the whiskey community is. I mean, there's so many awesome people in the whiskey community already and we all look out for each other. We do stuff like this. We're willing to share stuff all the time and I mean, he just encompasses that whole entire mindset. You know, we help each other out with things like charities or charitable things that come up. And I think it's awesome he wants to do that. And I'm, I'm all on board. I hope this becomes an annual thing. And especially if people like it, they're following the series. This is going to be an annual thing. So thank you all so much for watching Beagle Rare Kentucky Howl today. 
keep an eye out for the whiskey dick next. He's going to be putting it out for you. Stay insane, everyone. <laughs>